Hello everybody and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. This is the rally series where we take various vehicles down a pre-built rally stage to see which can put down the fastest lap time. <laughs> So in the last episode, we took the Ford Racing Puma, and it ended up being our fastest front-wheel drive vehicle, but it was quite a way down the leaderboard because of its front-wheel drive. So I've decided today to change directions a little bit, and of course, you can see what we're going to be driving today. It is the Ford Velociraptor, or Hennessy Velociraptor, six by six so i'm thinking more wheels to the ground is going to be a good thing so let's see what we can do with the velociraptor we're going to upgrade it to s1 class we're going to go ahead and put in the racing v8 which gives us 850 horsepower we may come back to a turbo or supercharging later but for now we're going to keep it standard of course, we can go ahead and fit it with the overlanding kit or the spare wheel. We're not going to do that because that just adds weight, although it does look very cool. We can upgrade the tire width, but we can't upgrade the tire sort of traction. But it does have these off-road tires as standard. So all the vehicles in this series are fitted with the rally tire compound, unless they already have the off-road tires fitted like this vehicle so we're going to leave that alone uh, we're going to go ahead and put in a race clutch and we're going to go for the race transmission carbon fiber drive shaft and we want the rally differential so we can go ahead and tune this thing in a moment we're going to upgrade it with the best brakes possible we're not going to put anti-roll bars on this thing, but we are going to reduce some weight. So this thing is almost three tons, um, three and a half, three and a quarter tons to start. Uh, we can get that down to two and a half tons with a bit of weight reduction. So that is good. We'll go ahead and do that. And now engine upgrade. We can't really do much in here. Let's see if it is actually enough to get us up to S1 class. I don't think it will be. Unfortunately, not quite. We're still into A class. So let's go ahead and see if turbo will bring us up to S1. And it does. And it increases the horsepower by quite a lot. Now, do we want a turbo or do we want to go for a supercharger? I think we want to go for a supercharger. Because if we're looking at the torque graph, um, we don't really have a lot of pickup in the bottom end. So we're going to go for the supercharger so we have instant power. And that is going to bring us up into S1 class. And of course, we'll go ahead and upgrade the supercharger as well. So the power to weight of this thing is quite impressive. We've got 1200 horsepower, almost 1300 horsepower. But we have got a lot of weight to shift. Um, so there we go that is the vehicle built i'm going to go ahead and tune the thing now and wrap it with some kind of nice racing livery and i'll see you guys at the rally course okay our first attempt in the ford hennessy velociraptor let's see what we can do with this thing now i've driven the mercedes 6x6 and that thing understeers quite a lot so i'm expecting this to be about the same but it gets a good launch it's a very good down the bumps but yes the understeer is apparent this thing is quite a long but of course six wheels of driving means we've got six wheels putting the power down we have to brake quite early for the corners to get it turned in it doesn't struggle with the water at all uh, that was a problem we've had with the last couple of cars we run, the Puma and the Lamborghini. We just barely got that checkpoint, and I'm in way too high a gear. Of course, the supercharger will be helping with a bit of low-end grunt. You can hear it whining away, 
We're way, way out in the field there. The understeer in this thing is massive. I'm not expecting it to be the fastest vehicle that we've driven. But I'm curious to see how a six wheels compares to the four that we've been using. Yeah, we get a whole heap of understeer through the hairpin there. I'm not expecting any airtime over the jump. No, none whatsoever. But we turn in early for the next couple of corners. This is where the Velociraptor is going to make up a whole bunch of time. We've got nearly a thousand horsepower, six wheel drive. But then we get a massive heap of understeer at the top of the hill. So we have to have a big dive on the brakes. The understeer in this thing is horrible. And that was the same situation I had with the Mercedes. Now let's see what we can do in the final couple of corners here. We're having to slow it down way, way too much just to get the vehicle turned. I've tried tuning the understeer out as much as I possibly can but there's only so much you can do through tuning it is then up to the vehicle but there we go across the line at a 214.735 that is a very decent first lap time that's going to put it just behind the Chevrolet K10 in a 13th place just above the Audi Quattro from the first episode so not a bad showing it's in the top 15 cars already let's see if we can actually get it a little bit higher up the leaderboard the closest vehicle I'd say we've driven to this thing is the F450 Super Duty which is only a couple of places ahead in 11th so let's see if we can beat that vehicle with the Velociraptor Okay, round number two, we've got this beautiful Ken Block Horizon Hoonigan livery going on. So let's see if that can add us a couple more horsepower, give us that much needed power to try and beat the Super Duty. That is our new benchmark time. That is the time that we're going to try and beat with the Velociraptor. It sounds absolutely fantastic with that racing V8 and a supercharger. It really picks up on the straights, but then it struggles in the corners. I'm really having to steer the vehicle, use the throttle to try and spin the back end round a little bit. And we've got to be super early on the brakes just to get this thing through the corners. But it doesn't struggle whatsoever in the water splashes. We weigh almost two and a half tons, so it's just like a battering ram going through there, just like we had in the Mercedes-Benz truck although that thing weighed quite a bit more. Down the street here, we're doing 145 nearly. That isn't a bad showing. Nearly rolled it through there though. Coming into the hairpin, I think we want a third gear. I'm just gonna coast through there. Try and use the front wheels to pull the vehicle around. Of course, its length doesn't really help. It's almost like rallying a limo in this thing, but Longer vehicles are usually a bit more stable, and this thing does feel very, very planted, I have to say. It gets the power down nicely through the straights and some of the less tight corners. This thing does cope very well. It's just on some of those hairpins where it struggles, and especially in this last section here, it struggles massively with that corner. I have to have a big dive on the brakes just to get it turned in. These couple of corners last time weren't great. And again, I'm full lock to the left and now I'm full to the right and it's just not wanting to go around a corner. It's understeering like hell. Down here, we're nearly into the trees. Little brush on the fence, but it's definitely a faster lap time than the previous run. In fact, we have beaten the F450 Super Duty with a 210. 0.598 that is going to put it just behind the Subaru 22B um, but above the Super Duty so we have beaten the Super Duty let's see if we can continue to climb let's see if this thing is actually faster than a proper Subaru rally car all right final attempt here I'm not going to spin the wheels off the line we're going to knock it straight up into second gear. This thing launches incredibly well with all six wheels driving. 
gonna try not to brush any fences or poles and we failed with that straight away down here we have to break super early just to get the thing turned in you can see it under steering it just wants to go straight but then when you do get it in a straight line it goes like a bat out of hell through the water splash here we don't even need to keep to the right hand side because it just goes through there so well but we're way out in the field here that is going to cost us a little bit of time through this section here we almost missed the checkpoint and we took out a load of fence there i'm going to shut up and try and concentrate a little bit we don't actually drift it through that corner there like most of the vehicles i'm guessing this thing just has so much grip that it can't all right up the hill here we're gonna have to have a break there otherwise we're not gonna make the corner we have to break super early and get it really slowed down for the hairpin but then you can absolutely belt it down this straight and then early on the brakes through here this feels like our smoothest run so far and we found with the hurricane the smoothness did pay off like it did give us the fastest run but this does not feel fast compared that supercharger is working overtime alright coming up to the last couple of corners I'm having to just sort of dot on the brake just keep dabbing it to try and get it into the corners you can probably see the brake lights dipping on and off every five seconds I get in it through here it just aims for the fence there it's not quite as bad as the Ford Puma where it just wanted to go off into the hedge every time but coming down the hill now it's not going to be our fastest run but definitely the smoothest a 212.032 so let's go to the leaderboard and see how this thing racks up well, it's going to be an 11th place for the Ford Hennessy Velociraptor, just above the Ford F450 Super Duty, which was the time I was hoping to beat with this thing. It was a 210.598, and that is a pretty good showing from this vehicle. Like I said, while we're doing one of the runs, it is like rallying a limo. This thing is so incredibly long when you try and turn in a corner it just goes straight but as soon as you get it on a straight it absolutely belts down there this thing was incredibly incredibly fast down the straights and coming up the hill of course it had nearly 1300 horsepower and six wheel drive but it did weigh quite a lot so it needed that amount of power just to lug it up the hill but a very impressive showing from this vehicle it did what i thought it would do it was very good in the straights, it was very good through the water splashes, it was fantastic up the hill, but it just struggled a little bit with the turning. So thank you so much for watching, hopefully you did enjoy this episode. If you did, please smash the like button, it just really helps out the channel. And until next week, see you later.